What's up, YouTube family? Welcome back. Uh, welcome to today's first class. Today's class is for beginner nail techs. If you are interested in being a nail tech, if you are interested in making money, if you are always just interested in nails or you just watch my channel and you want to see what I got to talk about today, welcome to lovely Mimi's nail class. Welcome to the nail salon, honey. Today we're going to teach you how to do what to have get for nail. <laughs> okay. Now, nail is an art, okay? It is not an overnight process that you're gonna learn overnight. It takes lots and lots and lots and lots of practice, okay? I'm sorry, but that, it's blowing y'all. So, I'm going to start off by um, introducing things that you need, okay? So, first off, we want to start off with a drill. Drill, the drills is made for your, uh, let's see the the processing step okay so um and the filing around the cuticle so it's important that you get you a really good nail drill this is a mani pro this costs about like three to four hundred dollars um i always recommend that you do invest into a good nail drill this is where you make money so it's just like you know like a laptop if there's something that you're doing that you use a lot, you want to go get a good one. They do have some that are cheaper. I think C and D has a machine for like two something. Um, it's not as light as the Manic Pro. Now, when I started off, we use um, my sister Dina. She's still using Capital High. You know the hanging drill, which are like eighty bucks, but they're very noisy, <laughs> and it's also used with a foot pedal. Um, so she's been using it for so long. She still uses it. I actually used mine for 10 years. When I moved to Atlanta, the lady at the shop, she made me switch and got a Manny Pro because this comes with a clip. You can clip it on and cause we were doing like fill-ins and stuff and full set at the pedicure tables, getting clients in and out. Um, this is very lightweight. Uh, it, it goes really fast too. And it, and it lasts. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you to get any, no $40 drill. $50 drill, $60 drill, um, those are no good. They break, they're not as strong, and they be slipping. Uh, they don't have a grip to hold in your drill bits really well. So if you are doing nails, I do not recommend for you to get one of those. Um, anything under $100, I, I wouldn't recommend. So get one of these. It plugs in, it charge, it goes. Very strong battery life. And then you will need drill bits, okay? This is a medium diamond. Okay, when you buy these, the sandpaper, okay, it comes like this, okay? It's a little empty nipple, and then you buy your sandpaper. These are the soft ones, okay? So I use the soft ones on top of real nail bits, and then there are also hard ones. The hard one I use to chop off the nails. Um, I do a lot of filing, and I, I use a drill for a lot of things to cut down time. If you guys don't know who I am, I am, I've am i been in nail tech since I was 16. I really started to get good until I was like in my 20s. Uh, I worked at one salon. Then I bought my first shop at the age of 23 in Capitol Heights with, along with my sister and my, uh, my sister-in-law and my brother. And then I moved to Atlanta, and I opened up uh, two different nail shops. And... Now I'm in California, and ever since COVID, I just haven't been doing nails. It's a, and then it's a lot of scary stuff out here in the world. So now it's time for me to be teaching you through here. <laughs> I've done nail tours. Um, I've done a nail tour. Let me say that I've been to a few different states, and uh, it was much. It was really really fun. I do look forward to doing more hands-on nail classes with you guys, but. Because of circumstances, we're going to do this for now. So I hope this video is very informative and there's going to be more sessions today. I'm really only going to touch bases on the things that you need, okay? You can find everything literally at your local nail supply store. So you can look up the closest nail supplies to me. A lot of times they will say, oh, you need a license to get in, but they'll let you in. People need, they need money. They need to make sales. If not, you can go on Amazon and find certain things. Um, make sure you guys read the reviews see how many stars how many people bought it and stuff like that and not they don't have almost everything but uh for the most part you can um and i'm not big about brand remember this i am not here 
to sell you any product okay this is not a commercial for any product um this is really just me teaching you what i know what i learned what works for me and um yeah i've been doing nails since i was 16 i'm 30 years old um my specialty is speed i can move really fast um be creative i can measure with my eyes and get things done cut down time okay all right so went over the nail drill nail bits sandpaper diamond all right also we need where my stuff nail tips we have clear nail tips okay we have uh there's curved nail tips okay so as if you can see that originally we used like back in the day none in the day whatever you know people like different nails um but we used to always do curved nail tips and that was in style back you know but we don't really like curved nail tips anymore we go for the flat nail tips but some people still like the curved nail tips so that's okay too so we have flat nail tips or these eden nail tips um i don't know where they sell them at uh i go to trans nail supply in atlanta i know they don't have it online i don't know why but um two skin turn down we use i need to use the flat one the only reason why i like to use the flat one because the shaping looks so much better like when they're flat like oh all the coffins it just looks really good the curve one i can i don't feel like you can shape as well because of the side it's curved so the coffin don't be as sharp um so nail tips you need nail glue to glue the nail tips on okay and then we need a brush all right I use these flex brush Kolonsky. It's uh, made in Germany. Okay. I use a size 20. Now I do know a lot of beginners. Y'all start off with these tens and 12. That's too small. That's too small, too small. I need you to at least start at a 14, 16. Okay. Uh, my sister in law used a 22. I used a 20. She used even bigger than me. Uh, you hold more liquid, you can hold more acrylic. Uh, I did, a, if you haven't seen the video, I did do a challenge where I did a nail set with a size 10 brush, which is the smallest brush I ever used. It took me forever. It was driving me crazy because I'm used to doing one clump. Okay. I'm used to doing a lot of long nails, a lot of, um, and I need a bigger brush to pick up all that all that acrylic to for me to move faster so i do recommend for beginners to at least get a 14 16 brush okay you want the brush hair to be long okay you want it to be silky and um have them press it out for you when you go to the nail supply they will press it out for you they're gonna ask if you want to press you see right there so they pinch it and they press it out for you i like to clean my, when i clean my brush i dip it in my liquid and i smash it down okay to build that flat surface in your brush okay this nail brush run about 45 45 like it's it's up there i remember it was like 30 dollars but I, the prices went up this is like a 40 45 brush okay it's called a flex brush kolonsky germany size 20 is about 45 dollars um it's very important to get a good brush now what i would do want to say about getting a brush is not I didn't think that people wouldn't know. So for you guys, beginners, I do remember somebody coming to my class and she brought in a French, you know, a French cleanup brush. But me not realizing that, thinking that everybody should know a little bit more than before, you know, entering a class. She thought that she could do acrylic with that brush. And no, 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 no. You have to get an acrylic brush made for it. Okay. I run into a lot of bad brushes that you know stick to things or you know and i spent a lot of money on it too and i couldn't return it i was really frustrated i absolutely love this brush i have like freaking four of them <laughs> and um when i used to run the nail salon so uh i would buy it once my brush get old i i would give it to one of my girls because you know they never want to go buy their own brush so and then i buy a new one and then everybody always had one of my uh, old brush <laughs> i was always passing my brushes along but this brush is so great you guys it's, it's freaking awesome um it lasts so long so invest 
your money in a brush, okay? Um, then you will need your acrylic, okay? You, you're clear, you're white, you're nude. I don't do gel nail polish anymore. Um, of course, when we first started nails, we were doing regular nail polish. Then gel polish came out, and then I was doing gel polish on top of nails. Um, I can only teach you what I do and what works for me. Um, so I don't do gel nail polish anymore. I do uh, acrylic powder. My clients uh, wear their nails for about four to six to eight weeks. So by that time, their nail was old and it was dirty and we start over with a new set. It's not like back in the day where you get a $15 fill every two weeks and you put polish on top. Um, I don't know if other nail techs agree with me, but time has changed and I don't feel like you should wear the same set for that long. Like even like with these, they're going on four weeks and I'm ready to pop them off and I already have a new set, new color, new everything. You know, you got your money for it, you wore it. Just like changing a wig out or something like that. Okay, now we need primer. Um, you can buy your primer in the big jar. You can buy in a little small one. They have the acidic one and the non-acidic one. I like the acidic one. I like for my nails not to look oily. The acidic one, um, the non-acidic, I want to say, it has like a shine after you put it on. I don't trust it. You can use Bond-Aid too, but make, uh, make sure you have your, your primer. Okay. You need a, nut, a buffer and a nail filer. I always like the white grip one, okay? I, I like the 80-80, it's a little bit harder. I like the big and square, it gives me more space to hold. And you want a file that doesn't break, you know. Um, <clears throat> let's see. And we need nail clippers. We need a good pair of scissors. All right. These are my favorite scissors. I don't know where it got it from. <laughs> I swear I just be jumping in and out of these different nail supplies. Just go to different nail supplies, you guys. Find the stuff that you like. Try things out. Um, I found these scissors, and I'm in love with them. A small, sharp scissor. Not too small. Not like the eyebrow size. But I use this for shaping. Like when I cut my nail tips, I cut with these. I used to cut with these. Okay? And, um... I just didn't feel like switching anymore. A lot of people do coffin. This was more for like square cut down. But this right here, I was able to cut cut to the size of the coffin. Okay. Nail clipper to cut down the real nails. Okay. Different people have different techniques of cutting their shape. I cut my shape with scissors. Okay. Nail clippers. Okay. Cuticle clippers or a cuticle pusher. Uh, if your client has really thick cuticles, you can, you can push it back and you can trim it. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to hold a nail clipper. This is really, really important. You cannot do nails until you learn how to hold certain things. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. You see that? When I first started doing nails, I was holding it like this, where I had my finger down and I was clipping it. Or when you put the sa safety hazard on, they make the little thing, and you go like this. That is also incorrect. The correct way, okay, the bottom four is on the bottom. The thumb goes on the top. You use one finger on the inside, and it's an inside-out motion like this, okay? Inside-out motion. So, remember, all four fingers need to be on the bottom. The thumb is on the top. That is how you hold a cuticle clipper. You have to practice how to hold each utensil. You have to know how to hold each utensil before you can start doing nails. Pinky is very important, okay? Um, liquid, let's talk about liquid, okay? I, I don't normally, um, I don't normally like to get into um, products. Like I'm, like I said, I'm not here to sell anybody's product. I am going off of what I use. I don't knock anybody. Um, I don't get into argumentation about when it comes to the nail world. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. I know people are trying to sell their stuff and everybody has an opinion on everything. There is, uh, you guys always ask me, what kind do I use? Um, there is the non-MMA and then there is the MMA. 
Uh, MMA is just a chemical that's inside of liquid that is used to dry and stuff like that. It has a bad reputation. People say that it's bad. Um, people, it's, it's like banned from certain states because my first time not knowing, I went to, I did a class in New York and I didn't know that uh, MMA was banned in New York. I had no idea. So I was searching all around for a nail, nail store that had it because I just could not use the one that had non-MMA. Uh, to me, non-MMA smells really bad to me, but people who use non-MMA says that the MMA smells bad to them. But to me, it doesn't smell as bad or to people who do use it, use the MMA, it, it doesn't, you know, I, I honestly think that MMA smells really, really bad. Um, but either way, they're all smells horrible, right? Um, so what I learned in New York, like I still learn stuff every single day. What I learned about New York is that the non-MMA, it takes longer to dry and you only use a small amount. Okay, what I did like about the non MMA is that when I use um, after I finish drilling, like after I finish using the product and I go to drill and file, it's, it doesn't, there's not a lot of dust. Okay, and I use the MMA product where it is a lot of dust, but I have used it for so long that I didn't, you have to get the consistency down. Okay, also, of course, the non MMA is actually more expensive. So let's say, um, I want to say like Young Nails. Valentino, like, uh, their, their bottle is about this, this big, and it costs about 50 to $60, where MMA, this is a bubblegum one, bubblegum flavor, and this is about $35 for a whole gallon. You get way more liquid, okay? So it's totally up to you what you want to use, you, but you have to learn the consistency on your own depending on the liquid that you use. What I noticed is when I use the MMA product, I can literally use any type of brand acrylic. But when I use the non-MMA, I have to use it with their acrylic like so i had to use young nails with young nail acrylic i had to use the Valentino with the valentino uh the uh, the one that i had used in new york was something like ugly duck the ugly duck i had to use it with their acrylic so that was a little bit different for me um i wasn't able to use it to with anything with this this um liquid i use i'm able to use it with anything um with any any name brand i see a color i like i buy it and i can use it with anything um so I don't really like get into the argument. Everybody has, you know, their preference, but you're going to have to learn how to um, find a consistency on your own. Okay. Depending on whatever liquid that you use. Um, so yes, with M with the non MMA, you use less because I, I, that's where I was having a hard time with because I'm so used to using a lot with the, with the MMA. Um, but I just feel like it dries faster for me because I move really fast. It dries faster for me and the other one just takes so fucking long to dry. <laughs> uh, so use whatever works for you. Um, you're going to have to find a consistency on your own, depending on your liquid, like I said. All right. Um, so you need your top coat and you need a gel machine you can find gel machine now on amazon for like 30 40 bucks this is isn't, isn't really a good one that i have um we're gonna talk about designs and stuff later designs and stuff come at the end one thing i have to say um people who say that uh, mma is bad for your nails or it damages or i've been seeing these wild ass pictures and i'm just like I've, I've been doing it. I've been using it since I was 16. I've been getting my nails done since I was 10. My nails are fine. <laughs> my nails are healthy. My client nails are fine. Remember this, you guys. It doesn't matter how expensive the product that you are buying. You can go out here and buy all of the name brand things. You can go buy all of the expensive things. But if your skill as a nail tech suck, your nails are still going to suck. You're still going to have lifting you're still going to have breakage. You're still going to have um, fungus or mildew because of your lifting or because of your skill. Okay. So do not worry about going out here and buying the top of the line nail stuff or trying to, trying to keep up with that because you're still up and coming. You're still learning. You need to master the application. You need to master your nail skill because you can bring me all the cheap stuff right now and 
tell me to use it and guess what your nails are still going to come out great and your nails are still going to come out lasting for a long time because i done mastered the skill i done mastered the application so that's why i said i'm not here to sell you anything because you literally can use whatever i'm here to help you build your skill but in order to build your skill you have to learn these small things okay so this risk okay for homework what i want you to do is i want you to work on your wrist okay nail techs you cannot be a stiff person and do nails what i learned from teaching classes is a lot of people are very stiff okay why do you have to be flexible because your client can only move their fingers but so much you don't want to force your client to move where you need them to move. You have to build your flexibility for you to move your brush or your drill without killing your client, without making your client bend over backward. You have to be able to move your wrist, okay? So for instance, when you are drilling from this side, you have to be able to flip your wrist to go around, okay? Flip. To go around okay when you're hitting the top of the cuticle it's upward then downward then around then around so i want you to work on your wrist okay you have to have to work on your wrist you got to be able to be flexible to do nails okay learning to hold whether it's from this you have to learn how to hold utensil properly this pinky some people use pinky some people might use this I always have to, your pinky must be out for everything, even polishing of the nails. Hey, Jess, yeah. can I borrow your finger? Yeah. This pinky is important. When I am doing acrylic, pinky must always be out. Imagine yourself drinking a cup of tea. <laughs> pinky out. Pinky must always be out. That's how you hose things dirty. See? When I'm putting acrylic, my pinky is out. When I'm polishing, my pinky is out. Okay? This is incorrect. Holding something like this, incorrect. Hold your brush like this, incorrect. Pinky. Pinky holds everything sturdy. When you are drilling, pinky must be out. This pinky has to always be out. So, all right. So what I mean, this is how you hold it. This is not how you hold it. And this is definitely not how you hold it. The thumb is on top. And always hold your client fingers with two fingers or three. You need to grip their finger like this. And that's how you cut. When you put in acrylic, the pinky must be out. Pat, pat, pat. Always secure your customer with this. Pat, pat, pat. When you are drilling, hold, grip, secure the customer finger. Pinky must be out. Because if your pinky isn't out and this is just running like this, this can slip any moment and cut your customer. You have to have that balance. This pinky is for security. This is to hold, to control. This pinky must be out. What I mean by the wrist is you cannot turn your customer like this just so you can get your like this. You must learn how to maneuver your wrist. And that's what I mean. See, and then you go around this way, around this way. I'm able to move and drill around her entire cuticle without bending her fingers, okay? So that's why I say practice on making this wrist very, very flexible, okay? Very, very flexible. Pinky still out the whole time. Pinky still out the whole time. This pinky must always be out. All right. Okay, guys. So... This is my liquid. I always like to clean my brush like this. Okay, and dip it, swirl it. I'm gonna use a pink toilet 
you can see. Oh my God. Okay, when you buy colors like this, right? Say you buy something like this. Say the color is thick, right? That's what a lot of these uh, color acrylic. They come out real chalky. To make the color last longer or to make it less chalky, you can pour clear into it. And it wouldn't be so chalky and make your color last longer. Because the color acrylic is nothing but pigment, okay? Your dip, okay? Once you're in, is dip in, dip in, drain only one side, okay? Dip in, drain one side. The side that you didn't drain is what you're gonna dip in, okay? Dip in, drain only one side, then the other side, dip in. We are not poking straight down, that is wrong. The acrylic should never be on both sides of the brush. The acrylic should only be on one side of the brush. Also, if it's like that, incorrect. I can't, I wanted, I'm trying to do it wrong so that y'all can see what I mean. But if the acrylic is powdery still, once you lift it out, that's also incorrect. I don't know how to do it wrong, that's the thing. So what I want you to practice is getting this consistency right. Okay, so dip in, drain one side, get that perfect ball. So all of these should look like this. Okay. Okay, see that? This is what I want you to practice, okay? Get your liquid, get your acrylic, and get that consistency correctly, okay? Get you a nice ball. You don't want it to be powdery. If it's still powdery, you're doing it wrong. I want to be able to show y'all how to do it wrong, but I can't, okay? And after every time, make sure you clean your brush, okay? Clean your brush on both sides like this. Build a relationship with your liquid so that you know how much liquid, okay? Everything is in your eye. You should be able to measure. If the pinky is small, of course, I'm only going to get a little piece. Boom, okay? If... The nail is big, boom, I'm going to dig deeper and get a bigger piece. You have to build a relationship with your brush. Okay. It is really, really important for you to build a relationship with your brush. Okay. This is your money maker. This is what is going to pick up the amount of acrylic that you need. Okay. You should be able to look at your brush, look at your liquid. You build a relationship with it. You know that if you dip further, you're going to get more. You dip less, you're going to get more. If you're working on a left corner, we're only going to put the acrylic on that bit of corner. Okay? So, homework for after this session today, okay? We're not going to move forward. I'm going to do bits at a time. Our next class, we will get more into putting the glue, okay? Putting the nail, the shaping, and stuff like that. But for beginners, hi, baby. Um, for today, literally, work on your wrist, okay? Pick up that nail drill and literally go around. You should be able to go around your cuticle without moving your client's finger, okay? Work on that wrist, okay? And get your liquid, get your acrylic, find the consistency. Dip in, swipe on one side, use the, only the wet side to get that, okay? Practice on a piece of paper or even practice on a fake nail, okay? As we go further onto the class, I'll have the fake hands for you guys to see, okay? Dip in, only scrape on one side, drop, pull, okay? By the end of our course, I don't know how long it's going to take, I want you to be able to do a one clump perfectly like that, okay? I want you to be able to do nails where how I do because what I'm gonna teach you, the, the long outcome of this is your speed. What does speed equal? Speed equals you be able to make more money in one day. For anybody who are beginners, 
we know we are commissioned and we or we we don't get paid by the hour so i want you to be able to get quality along with quantity how many people you can do a day i can do an hour a person if i start at 9 a.m by 8 8 8 p.m i can do at least 10 people a day okay and that includes the entire full set that includes the designs the diamonds everything that comes with it i want you to be able to make that money because baby if you are literally only sitting on one person and it takes you four to five hours to do one person and in those four or five hours i did five people and you did one person i made four times more than you i made five times more than you that's that's not okay because you have a family just like I have a family. I want you to get to the point where you have quality. And it's not that I'm rushing people. I'm not rushing nobody. Everybody still get that quality. My clients still are able to, they wear the nails four to six weeks. They got their money worth, but they didn't have to sit there all day. Because just as much as you don't may not want to do sit there all day, the client doesn't want to sit there all day and spend a whole day in a nail salon. I want you to make as much money with the same exact quality as if you were sitting there three to four hours okay taking a long time doesn't mean that you're doing a good job okay but you have to learn the simple steps okay so what did we learn today guys we learned to get you a good drill you need a medium diamond bit and you need sandpaper you need a nail filer you need a brush okay you need a good acrylic brush invest in these acrylic brush and this is two most important things this is your money maker okay put money out into this these are your two money makers and they last you a long time so it's not like you have to replace this every month no these are your money maker you want to do nails you want to invest go get you a good nail drill and a hell of a good brush okay get you some scissors <laughs> Okay, get your nail tips, get your glue, get your gel machine, get the liquid that you are deciding to use. Okay, learn the difference, you know, go buy you the MMA one and buy you the non-MMA one. Try it for yourself to see what you like, you know, what works for you. Because what works for me may not work for you. What works for her may not work for her. It's all up until you try different things, see what you like. Okay, learning to pick up acrylic with different liquid is completely different so whatever liquid you decide to use stick with it okay because it's not the same when you switch to another liquid okay speaking for myself so find what works for you what you like what smell you like um find a consistency that you like i'm not here to sell any brand or any product i'm literally telling you to see what it is that you like now remember i said that the non-mma you can use a less amount the one with MMA, you can use a larger amount. i just been using this since I was little and I'm used to it. So it's hard for me to switch out. You also can mix it up a little bit if you want to. Um, so go home, get somebody or you are home. Work on those wrists, okay? The wrist and that pinky, okay? Check yourself if that pinky is not out. When you're going to polish, check that pinky. Is that pinky out? That pinky needs to be out for everything. It needs to be out for when you're polishing. That pinky needs to be out when you are drilling. This pinky must always be out and work on your wrist. And also work on your clumps, okay? So work on building a relationship with your brush, building a relationship with your liquid and your acrylic so that you can get the perfect clump. So literally just sit there and just keep finding the great consistency. If it's too chalky, if it's too chunky, you're not doing it right. It has to be that shiny. Okay, your acrylic should still be shiny. Um, yeah, work on those wrists. So that is that is today's class, okay? And next time we are going to actually glue the nail on and I wanna see. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna get to the ombre. We're gonna get to the tricolor. We're gonna get to the encapsulated. We're gonna get to the diamonds. All of that is fun stuff, okay? But you can't get that until you get the foundation right. Okay, you cannot get that until you build a relationship with your brush, your liquid, your acrylic, and work on those wrists. Okay, designs are easy. Those are the fun stuff that's easy. But what? guess what? You can do 10 fingers of cute freaking designs. It looks so good. But then your foundation stuff and then all the nail break off and fall off. That was a waste of time. That was a waste of money. What was the point of sitting there putting all these cute designs if you can't get the foundation right? So, yes, 
Work on those reds. Pinky out. I will see you guys next time, okay? Stay tuned. Turn your post notification on. Keep working towards it. Um, nails is great. Nails is really fun. Um, it's easy money. It's fun money. It's a way to build relationship. It's a very woman-empowering like job, I feel like. Um, you know, I've always enjoyed working and talking to women and making them feel beautiful. Um, and it's time to teach you guys. I know you guys watch me do nails, but I don't sit there and really tell y'all what the hell I'm doing. But uh, get you a piece of paper, get you some acrylic, try different liquid to see which one you like, find that consistency. And um, I see you next time. Love you guys. Bye.